Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And today I want to cover uh, my favorite financial program and that's called MoneyWell. Now I've been using MoneyWell for several years now and it's been a great program to help me manage my finances. Uh, MoneyWell has a ledger system like most other finance programs that you've used probably before. Uh, it's got graphs and charts and those kinds of things, the ability to reconcile uh, your statements and all of that. Uh, but what's unique about MoneyWell is its budgeting capabilities. Now it, it doesn't set a budget like most programs do or you set a budget and then you look and see how you never met your budget. Uh, it uses uh, a take, its own take on the envelope system of budgeting. And so with an envelope system, basically what that, uh, how that usually works is you have physical envelopes for different expenses that you've got. Then you would take your check that you got from your job, then you would cash the check, put cash in each of those envelopes, and then when you've spent the allocation that you would in that envelope, then it's gone. And uh, then you'd have to wait until you were able to refill those envelopes again. In MoneyWell, it basically uses the same thing, but instead of envelopes, it uses buckets. And so you, you set your uh, budget by buckets, and you fill those buckets to a certain amount, and then when that money's been spent, it's kind of neat. The buckets turn over and let you know that uh, there's no more money in there uh, until you allocate it for the next month when you get paid. So it really is a is a great program. And this is it. This is it here on the uh, Mac App Store. You can download it and install it there. I know they have a special going on right now because they've just upgraded to the 2.0 version. Now there's been a little bit of confusion, I think, or uh, actually probably that's a light statement. Some people are kind of upset. They feel like the interface has changed a little too much from what they're used to. So I thought I'd do this screencast to help you kind of see uh, what the interface looks like and uh, kind of do a comparison to show you that uh, a lot of the things from the old one are still there. Not quite the same. There's a few things that are different you'd have to get used to. Um, but uh, but they've also made some improvements that I think have made the program even better in, in many ways. And so let's take a look at that together. I'm going to pop this down here. And what I'm going to do is pull up uh, the old version of MoneyWell, and this is what the old version looked like. And so it was kind of nice. It was a one-pane interface where you had all of your accounts up here at a glance, all of the buckets, which again basically are your envelopes that you're budgeting with. You had your ledger up here uh, with some bucket flow information there, and then you had your uh, your timeline here that showed your expenses uh, versus your income. So at a glance, you could get a good feel for how you were spending, and as you kind of hovered over it, it would tell you, you know. The difference and things like that and then on the side you would have uh, an input pane here where you can input stuff so again you know just a nice uh, simple one pane interface and I think in some ways that's what people liked and in some ways I think that's why maybe uh, this version is causing them a little bit of trouble because they don't see how that matches up this is the new version of MoneyWell, and it's been uh, cleaned up quite a bit. Uh, it does, uh, you know, it does look a, look a little bit nicer. It's lionized in many ways, uh, but as you'll notice, it is different, right? Because here you have your buckets on the side, but you don't have your accounts. You have to click another button here. Uh, to get to your accounts, and I think some people didn't, you know, don't like flipping back and forth. Uh, the other thing that that appears to be missing is uh, the charts. The charts aren't there, and where is the uh, the input activity on the right hand side that I showed you before? It doesn't look like that stuff's there. Well, let me just give you um, just kind of a little bit of feel how you can customize that. If you want the charts down on the bottom, you feel those are missing. You're able to add them or subtract them now, and so here they are, just by the click of this button, it's back. So you can see now I have my ledger and I've got my information on the bottom. That that stuff sitting right there and it's back now. Now if I want the side pane here where I can enter stuff and, and, and take a look at more information, I just click this info button here and now this pops out. And so now if I pull this up, let's see if I can do it in such a way to show it to you, and you see this bottom one here and you compare them, now they're a little bit more similar. Right? I mean, you can see now that we've got the ledger in the middle, just like we have here. We have the sidebar, just like we have up here. And then we have the other sidebar on the other side that gives you more information about particular transactions. See how that kind of looks right there, and it shows up and, and uh, gives you the info there. So it has, a, it has a similar look. It looks a little bit more similar now, with the exception of, again, these things now are divided up into three categories. They're not just all uh, displayed and expressed down this side. So let me, again, put the old money well down there. And let's take a look at how MoneyWell works, just to give you a feel, because I, like I said, I think there's some new features they added that make it even better. All right, well, let's start with uh, the accounts section first, because this is probably the most straightforward uh, of most of uh, the things on here. You'll notice on your accounts, you can add uh, the information that you have with your different accounts. If you needed to add a new account, you just click this plus button here and see it says new account. 
and it walks you through uh, adding your account. Now, if your financial institution allows you to just do automatic downloads of information, you can scroll through here and find your bank, or you can do a search up here. Uh, let's just try Chase for a second. And see, so it's got Chase Bank there, and so you could add Chase Bank uh, if you wanted to, and you could continue and go through here. And uh, you know, this particular one doesn't uh, doesn't support direct pay, so you'd have to go back and you could manually add it, uh, add the account in there. Uh, again, depends on your bank. Different banks allow the service, different ones don't. Uh, I found that uh, Chevy Chase does, and I found that regular Chase does allow the service, uh, but I've also got some Wells Fargo, Fargo accounts, and uh, you can have the service with them, but you've got to pay for it in order to have the uh, auto download, uh, which, is a, which, you know, again, it's an inconvenience, but I can still get the information uh, off their website with their QIF file or any of their Quicken download files, and I can import that information. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But, uh, but anyways, that's how you add an account, and you get your uh, account information up here. And it will pull pull the information down if it's an automatic uh, download. And you can do that just by clicking this download button. It'll go out then, and it'll start to add uh, to the transactions in here and add your information. Uh, each transaction then, when you click on it, changes the side over here. And over here, you can see who the payee is, the date. If you needed to change the date, you could do that here with this drop-down calendar. Whether it's a withdrawal, a deposit, or a check. If it's a check, it brings up uh, a window to put the check number in, uh, the amount that you've paid, or the amount that you've received. If it's a if it's a deposit, uh, and then right here, and we'll talk about this in a little bit. You've got uh, buckets that you can add, uh, where depending on what your budget categories are, you can specify the budget category that that particular transaction fits into. Uh, you can put a memo, tags on there if you want, and then here you have your status. Open, pending, cleared, reconciled, or voided. Uh, and you can uh, reconcile your information there. And then it also has the account that it came out of. You can pick the account. Now a neat little thing you can do with this as well is you can drop a receipt uh, right here. If you scan your receipts, that's one of the things that I do. I can actually attach the receipt for the transaction uh, to the transaction itself. So later when I'm looking through my information, I can actually look at the receipt that caused, uh, you know, that was a part of that spending uh, that I did uh, so that I don't have to go too far to find the information that I'm looking for. Uh, you can also do transfers here to other accounts. If I click the transfer here, it would say the from account and the to account right here. And that would then uh, not only uh, make this uh, show that it's a transfer to somewhere, it would also add it to whatever account over here uh, that I transferred the money to. And you can also do a split. Uh, and so in here I can do a split between different buckets so that what happens is the amounts then um, you know, like let's say some of this was personal care. Let's just play with this for a second. Let's say some of this was, let's say $20 of this was personal care and another um, $20 of it was groceries. Okay, I can do that split and I can save it as a split. And so now that whole cucumber thing, as you see up here, has become a split. Now, one of the things that is missing from this version, I'm sure the developer might add that later, is there was the ability in the old version to click a little triangle and it would show all of the items underneath it that were a part of that split. I haven't been able to find uh, anything on the info for that, on how I'm able to view that split. There may be a way to do it. I'm just not sure how that works. So that's probably that's one of the things that uh, that's missing from the old version that I'm sure we'll see some iteration of come back. Uh, but anyways, that gives you kind of a rundown now of the different accounts and things that are here. Uh, you've also got some smart filters. You know, you get your last import information here, any transfers you've made, unassigned things that you need to go in and maybe assign to buckets. Uh, you can even add smart filters if you want to. Um, and it's kind of neat because you can then have all these different filters here with which you can go through your transactions and see what's happening. Um, if you look across this top bar, you can, uh, you can star certain things. Uh, that are continuing. These are your favorites. Uh, so favorite places where you're spending and that kind of a stuff. You've also got uh, scheduled transactions, things that you have scheduled that are coming up that, uh, that you know are happening. You can sort them by date, payee, amount, you know, that kind of stuff. It's even got a search field here. Uh, this is kind of, a, kind of a, a neat way of doing it. I think it's a little bit more efficient even than the last one. Uh, you can also build filters if you wanted to. So you could do it by how far out, by years, what the status is, the type, the kinds of transaction, the bucket. Uh, you can even then save that filter as a smart filter. So if I said, hey, I want to see uh, all of the pending transactions that I've got, uh, and I, I, let's just say I just want to see pending, okay? So then I'm going to save it as a smart filter. And so it allows me then to save it, and I'm just going to call it pending, 
and I can say, you know, all my pending transactions, uh, you know, and maybe I say something that, you know, that, you know, to file, let's say, whatever I want to put there. I can always update this later, but you'll recognize this is very familiar from other things you've seen on Mac. And then I save it, and you notice on the sidebar now, my pending filter is right there. Uh, I don't have anything that's pending, so it's not showing there. But the nice thing is I can always set those filters up and find the transactions I'm looking for in a hurry. And so it's a nice, it's a nice deal uh, that that's set up that way. All right, so I'm going to let go of the filter. I'm going to get rid of these uh, filters right now. Let me just get rid of that. And now I'm back into my joint checking uh, example here of that information. Down below, you'll notice this is my cash flow. Um, again, it's my ledger. I can reconcile my transactions then by coming in here. I can put in my statement uh, that I got from my bank, what the starting balance is, and what the ending balance is. And then uh, I can go through and I can, uh, you can even do the dates here, and then I can auto reconcile if I need to. And uh, it'll look for duplicates or missing information. It'll show me the things that I still need to look at uh, to see if I need to reconcile those or not. Uh, this one's reconciled by the check, box, uh, check marks here. And so I can just go right through my statement and really quickly reconcile my, uh, my checking account. And so again, that's uh, kind of a, a, a nice way of looking at it. Uh, I know when it's done, it'll say reconciled across here. It's kind of neat. And then uh, obviously for this different accounts here, you have reports as well. Uh, that you can pull up. And so here's a report uh, for uh, my transaction report and I have uh, uh, I can do a new report if I want to. I can fit to view. I've got other options uh, if I want to where I can set the dates to maybe a month. I can group them by tags. Uh, you know I can group by bucket. So now it shows if you look over here it shows uh, the different buckets that things are in, right? Salary, bonus, those kinds of things. And this works really good. I've used this for, um, for my taxes uh, so that I can see uh, certain tax categories and things like that at a glance. And I usually am able to then save these reports on an annual basis and uh, just use them for my taxes. So it's, it's kind of a nice, convenient thing. Uh, so anyways, uh, that, that gives you the transaction view. Again, you can look at all transactions up here, and that's every transaction across all of the accounts that I've got. Now let's go over to the buckets for a second. Okay, now as I told you earlier, buckets are like the envelope system. They're my, exp they're my budgeting categories. You'll notice here that I've got a uh, income buckets here that I can set up. And so one's here for salary, maybe one for bonuses. If you've got different sources of income, you can set those buckets up here. And then I've got expense buckets. And these are all of the different bills and things that I've got to pay throughout the, throughout the uh, month. And some of them are annual and those kinds of things. And so um, the buckets then become the envelope amounts. And, uh, and those are the ways that I set them up. And so if I click on my auto bucket, you can see the different automobile expenses that that I've got. Uh, it shows what I've planned to spend and what I need to fill because I'm, I'm behind. I've, I haven't filled my buckets yet. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Uh, now to get these buckets going, there's a number of ways you can do it. You can click the plus down here uh, to add a bucket. So you can do a new bucket if you wanted to. Uh, you can also um, over here, you know, do it this way with a new bucket and those kinds of things. You can delete buckets and to get them out of the way. Uh, but if you look over here, you've got a spending plan uh, that you can set up. Now, this, these are the changes that they've made in MoneyWell that I think are good changes. I think once people understand them, I mean, I've been uh, just playing with it for a short time, but I like how it works already because uh, in the old system, what would happen is I would have to set uh, one budget, one bucket amount uh, for every month. Now, I could set it like twice a month depending on when my check was given to me and that kind of stuff, but it had to be a kind of a finite amount, and then I, it was up to me to make sure I drew the money out when I needed to and that kind of a thing. Uh, what they they've done with this particular uh, iteration of MoneyWell is they've allowed you to do events, event-based budgeting with these buckets. Now what I like about that is, for instance, you've got the automobile category here. Well, once a year I would have to pay, uh, I have to pay my car insurance. Right. Well, it's once a year that I'm paying it. I'm not doing it on a monthly basis, but but I want to make sure I've got money in the bucket uh, to make it happen. So I used to have to do all that math myself and figure it out. What I can do here is I can say, hey, you know what? I need to uh, I need to add an event. So I'm going to add some. I'm going to add a new uh, expenditure thing here, and I'm going to call it insurance. All right. Let me just write that up there. I'm going to call it insurance, and let's say I don't know. Let's say it's a thousand dollars. Okay. So it's got to be spread out throughout the year. And what I'm going to put here is it it, uh, it doesn't repeat, but what I'm going to say is that it's every year. So once a year on let's say 12 on 21, I've got to pay my my uh, my insurance on my automobile.
Now I want you to notice as soon as I've added that, look, it's added, it's up the amount in my automobile bucket and actually put that here. It's combined these two together and said, okay, this is this is uh, the amount that I've got in there. Now the nice thing though is it knows that this is just an annual thing. Every year, it says right here. This one's every month on the first. Uh, if, I wa if I wanted to pay this on a monthly basis, let's say I wanted to change this and I said, well, it's every month, I could actually uh, then say, okay, if I come in here, I can say when it ends or not. And uh, the timing for the fill of the bucket is I can say it's you know every day, every week, every month, every year. Or I can come in here under custom and I can say that I want this to happen, uh, you know, monthly, and it's going to happen uh, every every uh, month on the 11th and the 18th, and that's when I want that information to be filled in. Or I could get more specific and say exactly when I want it, the first Monday or whatever. But what's cool is it allows me to customize then when that money needs to be there based on when my bills need to be paid. And so, uh, so it's really kind of a neat, powerful thing because you're able to set all that stuff up in there and it makes it happen. Now, if you look at the top even, it shows my income. It shows this bar here on how much I've got, when I want this money to come in, and it shows this, this amount equals you know 36% of my income. So it even gives me at a glance, you know, how much I'm spending in auto and those kinds of a thing, kind of things. And it's kind of a neat way of putting that together. So you can go through and do that for every one of your buckets. And you just set these expense buckets up and uh, budget them out so that you know how much you've got there. And now you've got your plan. Uh, again, filling buckets. I click the fill bucket button and it tells me what I've distributed to my expense budgets according to what I set up for two, uh, for 218. And if I don't want to see this reminder, I don't have to. But you can see they flowed money in here. And so the black means I'm in the black. That's a good thing. The red means I'm behind and in the red. So what I can also do is I can say, well, you know what? I, I want to get out of the red there. I'm not going to spend this much money on clothing. I can actually drop this bucket on here. And I can put in the amount that I want to put in that bucket. So $275 is what I'm over. So I'm going to put 275 on there. And so it's uh, it's coming from uh, clothing to debt repayment. I'm going to add that. And now look, I zeroed out that bucket and it's already factored this in. So the cool thing is I can flow money in between these buckets as well. And uh, that allows me to uh, keep things balanced. Because sometimes if I got extra in one, I got to borrow from that uh, particular bucket or envelope and uh, pay off the other one. So it really has some some uh, some pretty neat uh, features on here for us to to take a look at. And then the new one of the newest things they've added is investments. Now I haven't spent any time uh, adding investments in. Maybe I can do another screencast on that another time. But uh, but even just the ability to have investments in here to track your net worth, uh, you know, not only your cash flow but your portfolio where it'll put all of your uh, net worth information on here, all your securities on this side. That's a nice thing to be able to have. And then you got reports again that you can do right off of this section. So anyways, that gives you a little feel for MoneyWell. That's MoneyWell at a glance. It's kind of a speed tour through it. I really think it is a good software program. And I think the developers uh, of MoneyWell are incredible. I mean, I've, I've had uh, personal contact with the head developer himself when I've had problems where he's actually taken a fi my file, fixed it for me, and sent it back to me uh, because of mistakes and things that I actually made in it uh, that got things messed up. And so the, the customer service from um, No Thirst Software is, is really good. And so... Uh, uh, don't don't look at the reviews on the site. I think uh, you know a lot of times we have emotional reactions until we get into it. Some people don't like the visuals. It looks a little different. I really think they did a good job cleaning it up. Uh, so I would highly recommend it. One more thing I forgot to tell you. I just want to add here on the end. When you go to preferences, you can actually sync uh, your finances with Dropbox, and uh, it, the the syncing is flawless. I've put information in my iPhone, and it's sunk right back to my desktop, and vice versa. And so uh, that's another great feature where you can track your spending on the go and have it with you. And I think the iPhone app is even free during the promotional period that they're doing. So anyways, that's all I have for you today. Uh, I'll come back at you with another screencast in the future to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.